Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful 22nd of May, 2023. Come up this episode of the Crusty Connect Podcast, episode 207. We pay, they play. That's right. Rachel Notley, being for the position of Premier of Alberta, wants a 11% tax hike. Of course, Justin Trudeau's inflation, as always. And a new report from the National Post in regards to the Governor General's clothing allowance uh, to the tune of $80,000 plus. Wow. Oh, my God. Must be nice, eh? All that more come up with the show. Please stick around. Listener and view discretion is advised because I do smoke cigarettes and drop the odd F-bomb or two or three, depending on the mood. See you in a bit. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. Yes, sir. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast, a Canadian veteran's point of view on political, social, economic issues, and life. Here's Krusty. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this podcast is brought to you in part by Battlefit Bodywear. That is right. Be Battlefit. Be Limitless. Be Battlefit. Battlefit Bodywear. Uh, information in the description, and there'll be commercial on the show later. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. So welcome to the Krusty Up Podcast. I'm your host, Krusty Canuck, on this beautiful, beautiful 22nd of May, 2022. Yes, it's been in, in the news in this province the past week, uh, based on the debate they had. Uh, Rachel Notley and Daniel Smith vying for the uh, covenant premiership of the province of Alberta. Yes, all this stuff. A lot of Twitter feeds are lighting up. A lot of other social media feeds are lighting up. And a lot of the mainstream media is being speculative on who is going to be the better premier of this lovely province we call Alberta. Yes, that's right. And if you like and hear it, see folks, please click like, subscribe, share this con- content and podcast, whatever, <laughs> all over your social media platforms. Tell your friends, they tell two friends, et cetera, et cetera. Let we can beat C11 together. Keep Canadian content alive and well by you, my wonderful audience, sharing the content out there. So yes, as I was saying, episode 207. Yes. We pay and they play. That's right. Now, in the last debate, Rachel Notley proposed an 8% tax hike, but on the uh, NDP of Alberta page, they basically want to increase it to 11% uh, to coincide with Ontario and Quebec. I think Ontario is 11.5% and La Belle Provence is at 11%. So, which is basically going to scare away any investment that this province desperately needs to get things on the go because of all the inflation that our beloved prime minister oh yes, and his allies have uh, put together for us, for us peons here in, uh, in the rest of the country. So I really don't care what people think about the NDP. I remember the NDP causing monstrosity back in Ontario in the late eighties, early nineties. Uh, the only good thing that came out of that was they told the insurance company to stop gouging people because I remember being the brash age around 16 years old and, Going for my license and then discouraged because there was no chance of me actually getting a car, not just because of the price of a vehicle at the time, but because of what it would cost me in insurance. So I uh, hand it to Bob Ray. Uh, we all know Bob Ray now. He's Mr. International Ambassador to the Finer Points of China and the UN, uh, who was a staunch NDP, but he became a liberal and basically just a kiss ass to Justin Trudeau and a career politician. And he mandated different insurance issues back at that time. Meanwhile, putting the province into debt during a recession. Kind of like what we're going through right now. Uh, When I look at Motley Notley and her BS, uh, the last time she was in, I think it's something like 180,000 jobs left the province, if I'm not mistaken. And not to mention how she wanted to tax farmers again and basically treat uh, family farms and family members of said farm as employees rather than just actual members of the, of the family dynamic. Now I used to work on a farm as a kid and honestly, ladies and gentlemen, I pardon my French. I fucking hated it. I hated it. I hate it with every, every fiber, you know, dairy farming is something that you really, really want to do. Not that you have to do, you know, if, if the market consisted of uh, no work other than working on a farm, then I would do it because it's a good pay. It's good, satisfying work. But when you're living on a farm and you're there 24 seven, it gets to you. You know, that's just me though. It's nothing to do with being lazy or, or trying to sound privileged. 
it's just, uh, it's not for everybody. It's like teaching. It's like working in a factory, manual labor. Sometimes it's just not for everybody and you should get into something else. But because of that experience I had as a kid, I embrace hard work and I respect the Canadian farmer. doesn't matter if they're wheat, doesn't matter if they're pork, beef producers, doesn't matter if they raise horses, uh, if they earn their bread and butter off their rodeos and stampedes. Agriculture is what built a lot of this country. It's what kept people alive, kept people fed, especially during the pandemic. And now you get these know-it-all politicians because <coughs> excuse me, they might have a degree in something other than reality. <coughs> excuse me. They take it upon themselves to regulate and add more crap to the monopoly of, of being a farmer. And it's hard enough for these uh, fine gentlemen and fine women out there that raise cattle and raise crops. Um, it's hard enough for them to get ahead, let alone more government regulation coming their way. So back to my point about the NDP, uh, they want to raise the corporate tax to 11% instead of eight. So that extra 3% is going to be really hard on any up and comers or anybody who potentially wants to invest in this province. So that's something to think about, ladies and gentlemen. And Miss Notley was in cahoots with Justin when it came to the carbon tax too. Her idea of getting our oil to market was using railheads. So therefore you're burning more diesel and putting more people out of their way to make sure oil is getting shipped because the pipelines are bad as far as they were concerned, right? It's bad for the environment. <laughs> no, it was just bad for them and their, their narrative. But anyway, here's uh, an article in regards to the lost jobs that Miss Notley would promote if she got in to politics. And I'll just read along here too for you, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I'll let you decide, my wonderful view viewers. Uh, what it is and i'll leave the links in my description for you all to follow along there too right uh it's basically just uh, an article from the national post from jack mintz uh, published on the 18th so four days ago and we'll get this queued up squared away and uh you know lost jobs and investment albertans can expect from rachel notley tax hike and it's amazing how a lot of these individuals love their taxes right so it's real long here for you so this week, the Alberta NDP leader, Rachel Notley, promised during the province's election campaign to raise the corporate income tax rate on a medium and large corporations by three points. So 3%, right? That would make the provincial rate 11%, almost the same as Ontario's and Quebec's 11.5%, virtually eliminating Alberta's corporate tax advantage in Canada, right? So Alberta currently attracts investment, the lowest corporate tax rate in Canada, but its 8% rate is almost more attractive than uh, the 44 U.S. states. If Notley were to raise provincial corporate tax to 11%, combined with federal corporate tax rate at 15%, Alberta's 26% rate will lose advantage, not just in Canada, but 18 more lower tax U.S. states. This will have a measurable impact on both investment and employment for Albertans. If Notley wins the election, her tax hike would come at a time when corporations already start paying more corporate taxes. That's because the federal and Alberta package of enhanced capital cost allowances introduced a few years ago are to be phased out from 2024 to 2028, although the U.S. is phasing its own out in 2018 era bonus depreciation scheme as well. So, interesting, eh? I estimate the economic impact of Notley's proposed corporate tax hike on Alberta by using an effective tax rate model I developed seven years ago with Philip Basil at the University of Calgary's School of Public Policy, and the effects are projected to be significant. The 3% or a three-point hike in Alberta's corporate income tax rate is estimated to result in an investment loss of $1.1 billion to Alberta. An employment loss of 33,700 jobs. This is a consecutive estimate since I don't include the impact of corporate tax hikes on available cash needed by businesses to pay their bills. With the federal and provincial governments phasing out enhanced capital cost allowances, an additional loss of $2.1 billion 2.1 billion dollars in, in investment and 59,500 existing or potential jobs is estimated right interesting that would mean the combined impact of rate increases and scaling back capital cost allowances result in a total loss of 3.2 billion in investment and 93 thousand two hundred potential or existing jobs not only has said she believes her corporate tax plan would raise provincial revenue by 6.2 billion over three years but as pointed out by the university of calgary economist trevor tome that fails to account for the impact of investment and tax planning losses that can result from a corporate income tax hike 
Based on my e earlier research, I estimate that a three-point increase in the corporate income tax rate will cause the corporate tax base to shrink by 15%. This would imply the NDP estimates of the corporate tax tax are off cl close to $1 billion over three years. This does not include the loss in personal or excise taxes that would result from people becoming unemployed. Alberta would need to attract more investment in the coming years to support economic diversification, the energy transition, and the anticipated removal of enhanced capital cost allowance measures. This would be woefully inopportune time to be raising corporate M tax in Alberta. So I'll just leave it at that, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I'll just leave it at that because every time we turn around, there is always somebody, something, someone who wants to increase more taxes on you. Now, it doesn't matter if it's this honcho or this party or that party. Every time they want to get investment, I can understand a tax rate. I, I can. I can understand a tax rate. Right? But when you keep up in the ante and increasing things, you, you're just deterring people away. You're turning people away. We saw that with our prime minister, Justin Trudeau. He turned Germany away for LNG. He turned Japan away. Turned the better part of the less fortunate in Europe away when it comes to LNG. Oh, we'll get you some hydrogen instead. Oh, oh, it doesn't make good business sense to sell to you right now, even though this country's in debt because of their ridiculous spending. How do you honestly think the NDP is going to do with uh, with spending if they get in again? Okay. Now, I know there's there's quite a new uh, orange wave coming up through Edmonton and Calgary. So to my listeners and, and listeners in uh, that, to my listeners in Calgary and Edmonton, what do you guys think? Do you really think it's going to save us all? I highly suggest you really think about the ballot come the 29th. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. Yes, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I have that little tidbit there. We pay, they play, yes. Miss Notley, 11% tax hike, Justin Trudeau's inflation, and our Governor General with an $80,000 plus Overhead for clothing. Yeah, clothing allowance. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Tax dollars at work. I'm your host, Krusty. Like I was saying, you can't deter investment. The country has seen enough of deterrent when it comes to uh, our natural resources and the just transition to make everybody live in Alberta with with, with wind power and solar because it's just so effective, right? Yeah, said nobody. Well, but anyway, it's uh, time for a little commercial break here. This is from the fine people at uh, Battlefit Bodywear. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Krusty Canuck here. Just to remind you, my wonderful audience out there, that Battlefit Bodywear was founded in Windsor, Essex, Ontario in 2019 and is a proud Canadian company. All of our apparel and accessories are purchased and printed right in our hometown by local independent business owners. We pride ourselves on quality and customer satisfaction. At Battlefit Bodywear, we believe that every person has a warrior with them waiting to come out. Our brand is meant to inspire and and fan the internal flame. Regardless of what your thing is, take it to the next level and be the best version of yourself that you can be. We also believe in that maintaining balanced lifestyle is a key to a good life and includes having a regimented and productive fitness and exercise schedule. Motivation comes and goes, but discipline will get you across the finish line. Get there with Battle Fit Body Wear. Krusty Canuck says so. Cheers. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen, Battlefit Bodywear, Battlefit Bodywear. Be battle fit, be battle ready, be limitless, be battle fit. Links in the description. So carrying on, too, with episode 207, we pay and they play. So I'm not going to gallivant more about Justin Trudeau. Frankly, ladies and gentlemen, I get really fucking tired of talking about the guy, honestly, because, you know, he's on the world stage. He was talking to the Prime Minister Maloney of Italy, talking about uh, uh, gay rights, trans rights, and all this stuff. And I've always understood Italy as being a very, 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 very liberal country, especially when it comes to people's sexuality. So more or less, Justin just barking up the wrong tree, trying to look virtuous and looking fantastic when he's basically embarrassed us on the world stage in regards to human rights. Now, whether you agree with the convoy or not, I've banged heads with people over the past year in regards to the convoy. Uh, we all saw how he reacted. We all saw what he did. So he doesn't really have any fucking right whatsoever to discuss human rights with any other country other than his own cabinet. Okay. So regardless if you agree with what they did in the convoy or not, he basically herded people like cattle, 
charged people unnecessarily, had people charged, regardless if it came out of his mouth or not, or his party's mouth. But a lot of people jumped the gun and charged the innocent. He uh, also was quite happy with Miss Freeland and her, you know, freezing bank accounts and bragging about, oh, we're going to stop terrorism when they incurred terrorism themselves. And you've seen it, right? The government goes out of their way to stop you from taking out your money, money that you earned. Um, who's the terrorist? Something to think about, especially my Twitter followers out there that keep, you know, stomping their feet, getting mad at everything I say or post, because I'm always challenging the status quo in regards to socialism and projected communist bullshit, especially when it comes to indoctrination of young minds there too. I want to reiterate, ladies and gentlemen, and let me be very clear. I personally don't care how you raise your children, as long as they're safe, they're fed, and they're looked after and they're loved. Okay. And if little Billy comes up to you one day and he's actually confused about who he is, and let him sit and stew with it for a while and let him make the decision when he's 18 or 19. Same if you have a little girl, Jane, and she can't decide where she is and where she's going. Let her decide, okay? This whole gender spectrum thing has got to stop, okay? Because as a libertarian, you're screwing with kids' liberties, basically, okay? And I've actually had this validated from some shrinks I know personally. You're really screwing with kids' liberties, screwing with their minds in the name of affirm affirmation or affirming care, they call it, right? And the likes of Notley and a lot of these other woke progressives, woke progressives, yeah, uh, screwing with kids and screwing them up. That's not going to help because you want kids to grow and be functioning adults regardless of their sexuality. I don't care if they're gay. I don't care if they're straight. I don't care if they're bi. Love who you want. But as long as they're able-bodied adults who can make those decisions for themselves, right? Because you're not going to send Billy to the store with uh, 20 bucks, a six-pack, right? He can't smoke a, a cigarette with his old man while watching the hockey game, right? Or he can't sit and have a glass of wine with Mama when she's having one of those rough days, no. right? But all this gender-bending stuff, leave kids alone. That's all. You know, let them grow up and decide. Right? Kid, kids, kids are not to be molded into artwork. They're not to be molded into statues uh, for someone else's virtue, okay? So when I look at these prog progressives talking about education and about fairness and equality, yeah, be fair and be equal. Make sure everyone has an equal opportunity to do something, to get out there, <coughs> to do things on their terms, okay? To change their life on their terms if they feel they have to, to express themselves on their terms, right? All this woke stuff about this rampant racism everywhere, bullshit. Because all these progressive groups go out of their way to constantly put people in categories over and over again. And like I've said before, I was not raised in that kind of household. I was raised to treat people with dignity and respect. And I judge people on their actions, not their gender, not what they put in their mouth or put in their rear or put in their nostrils or their eardrums. Okay, whatever you're into. On how they treat people. Okay. And it, we're just throwing more lambs into an unnecessary slaughter just for the sake of wokeism to be nice to people. There are many ways you can be nice to people without worrying about their gender or their race, showing courtesy, right? holding a door, little things like that. Right? You don't have to think a certain way. A lot of these progressive types are pushing that agenda. You must think this way. This is progress. You must do it this way. This is how it is. No, it's not how it is. It's not. It's, it's basically just borderline fucking ridiculous and uh, fascism. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen, if you're liking here to see, please click like, subscribe, share this content all around to my YouTubers out there. Please click the notification bell that you see at the top of your page there. So that way, when new content comes up, you get notified and you can look at it and share it with your friends and all that good stuff. And I can't stress enough to share this content. Please share it all over your social media platforms too. You can find me on Rumble. You can also find me on uh, Spotify, you can find me on Player FM. I'm just going to banner up here for you to do that too. Yeah. You can find me on uh, Podbean, Rumble, Spotify, Amazon, Grow Radio UK, and Player FM too. So to all my Grow UK radio uh, fans out there, please share this content all over Great Britain and Europe as you see fit, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, carrying on to 
with more of the whole episode. 207, we pay and they play. Yes, the Governor General has uh, been under scrutiny recently in regards to uh, a clothing allowance. Now, to my American listeners out there, we have a Governor General in, because of the name of the British monarchy. It just goes back to Canadian, Canadiana when Canada was still technically a colony. Right. Uh, but uh, lately, I really don't think we need a governor general anymore, uh, just for the sake that we don't really answer the king anymore. There are some traditions and values, yes, that some people hold dear. But when I look at the governor general, it's just position that's appointed. Uh, and then pff, that's it. She sits in the Senate, oversees this, oversees that, or he oversees this, oversees that. And that's really, that's nothing. But this story, excuse me. It comes from the 17th of May, so last week, uh, from fine people at National Post there. <coughs> Excuse me, Christopher Nardi. Yes, Governor General's billed over 88000 in clothing to taxpayers since 2017. So that's still quite a bit of money over the past six years for clothing. Oh, my goodness. Ottawa, Governor's General's Julie Payette and Mary Simon expense over 88000 in clothing they got to keep with taxpayers footing the bill for a range of items from ceremonial clothing to a $450 ECRU hat and $20 t-shirts. So since 2017, Payette and her successor, Simon, have expensed nearly 200 clothing items with price tags ranging from $3,000 for a black velvet dress with thug lining purchased by Payette in 2018 to an 1895 white gloves by Simon for Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee Celebration events in London last year in 2022. While some of the items were worn for specific ceremonies connected to the Governor General's role, Many others appear to be clothing for personnel or day-to-day -day business use. Yes. For example, pay a, a several t-shirts, shoes, sweaters, a $680 top, and dress pants ranging from $323 to $590 within months of her appointment in 2017. In November 2019, she expensed, wow, $1,641.71 in boots. And in 2020, she helped build taxpayers for seven custom-made items, such as a $2,470 suits and an $1,800 special order vest. I hope there's some ammo in that vest or something. I don't know, what, ladies and gentlemen, but ugh. oh, my God. <laughs> in a statement, Payette spokeswoman Lisa Boyer know that she only spent roughly $50,000 of her total clothing allowance over four years. Oh, well, that's that's all said. Only 50 grand. Well, okay. Holy shit. <laughs> she quit the role in January 2021 after review concluded she created a toxic workplace. Well, yeah, you know, you got $50,000 to spend in clothing. Of course, you can have a toxic workplace. You're not really doing any work. You're just being a goddamn model. Boyer also insisted that all clothes were related to Madame Payette's function, duties, and foreign state visits. She was also a very active governor general who promoted health and physical activity everywhere in Canada, all the way to the Northwest Passage. That's right, everybody. Stay fit and stay hot. Yeah, look at me. Do you like my boots? Simon also expensed dozens of uh, items within weeks of her appointment in July 2021, such as pants, dresses, shoes, jackets, and a $160 scarf. Since then, uh, she's also expensed a number of dress shoes, up to $429.99, dress pants, dresses, and suit jackets. Wow. So, you know, that's... Uh, that's, I don't know, I'm not going to read any more of this. It, it's just self-explanatory, ladies and gentlemen. No, really. It is. It's it's not really worth the time or the effort. You know, uh, it's an appointment. <coughs> and as far as I know, the salary of a governor general is anywhere from, I think, 280000 to about three three $325,000 a year. Right? And with that kind of salary, um, can you not buy your own shoes and your own $1,000 boots? Own riding crop and saddle, perhaps depends what you're into, you know. You know, that's just <laughs> but basically, when I look at these positions in our government, this is what those individuals are entitled to absolutely, absolutely nothing. nothing. Couldn't have said better myself, really. Absolutely nothing. So, that's a lot of money to, to shell out on attire and stuff, too. And when I look back at previous governor generals, I remember when I was in my first uh, first seven years, Adrian Clarkson was our governor general, and she never ever had the courtesy of wearing a uniform once. Now the governor general is you know head of state basically in charge of the military, right? Uh, you know on paper per se. 
And yet I've never, I never saw her wore a uniform at, at, once. Michelle Jean did. Um, Payette did. Um, David Johnston did. And there's something come up with him too. And his, you know, investigation in Chinese interference and um, Mary Simon has, I think, I think I saw her in an air force uniform. If I'm not mistaken, but needless to say, uh, when it comes to military events or any kind of speaking engagement, I would think the uniform would be sufficient enough. And I really don't think any government position should have a clothing allowance other than, let's say, to replace some socks or some gitch, maybe some shirts for the men, maybe some blouses for the ladies in Parliament. That's it. That's, you know, like, that's as far as I would go. I'm just like, that. that that's a shitload of cash. For just making an appearance, okay? And $50,000, there, there are people that try to make a living on that much money, okay? There are people who try to make a good go. There are people out there on average making from forty nine dollars to about 51000 bucks a year. And because of the tax hikes we've, we've been seeing in the past three years, a lot of those individuals have to pay more in taxes. Yet the governor general gets to sit there and complain or purchase $160 scarves or $1,000 boots, you know, while it's getting tougher for families of four just to put gas in their tank. Well done, Justin. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. Furthermore, when it comes to um, expense accounts, I understand uh, a lot of the big corporations have expense accounts when it comes to lunches, hobgobbling, you know, ho, 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 fa, 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 all that good stuff when you hobgobble and, you know, meet and mingle and stuff too. But it, it just adds more fuel to the fire. Do we need these positions in our government anymore? Do we need any more of these positions at all governing us, telling us what to do again and for what? For what? For the sake of virtue? For the sake of tradition? Do I honestly believe we should sever ties with the monarchy? To an extent, yes. To embrace our history and our past, yes. Colonial, yes. We had a colonial past. And all the good parts of our history and all the bad parts of our history, too. When it comes to education, I want kids to know that this is how our system was set up in the name of whatever king, whatever queen at the time. And then we learn from there. And then we also learn some of the tidbits and the bad bits too, right? I believe in telling kids about residential schools. I believe in teaching more First Nation cultures as well too. An insight to languages, an insight to, the, to lore, an insight to the dances, an insight to society that was going on well before white people ever came to North America, okay? But I'm not going to step back and hold back and be guilted or be shamed because of who I am. And I don't expect you, my wonderful audience, to be ashamed of who you are. I don't expect anybody in this country, to my friends in the States, to my friends in Europe, to my friends all over the place, everyone who's listening to this podcast, you do not be ashamed of who you are, regardless of your gender, regardless of your sexuality, or your political belief. We can't change history. We can't change the past. But we seem to be regressing back towards it for the sake of a few brownie points, or someone doesn't like the fact that this happened 200 years before their fucking existence. And yet we're not teaching some of these kids that it happened. Get over it. Accept it. Move on. Okay? But I'm not expecting people to heal overnight, too, from some traumatic events that happened 70 years ago, or 50 years ago, or in some cases, 20 years ago. But I am expecting people to learn and how to get along to the best of our ability and try to realize that this country is worth fighting for regardless. The democracy we have here is worth fighting for. Yes, we've got some terrible people in charge, but we can still go out in the street while it's still legal and speak our effing minds as we should. And not to worry about stupid things and feelings, right? Let those kids dwell on their feelings. Let those educators dwell on those feelings and the woke mandates. It's going to turn around and bite them in the ass later anyway. And let's just hope to God we're there to see it happen. You know? <laughs> <coughs> 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 I 
I don't know what to say other than you know, I, I'm trying not to uh, get mad and get angry at this. But uh, enough of this ridiculous spending, uh, enough of this ridiculous finger wagging, enough of it. All right. We got the provincial election coming up here in the 29th. So another week, this province will decide who's going to be our premier, Motley Notley or Dangerous Daniel Smith. All right. There's been people who are not happy with her. There are people who are happy with her. There are a lot of people who just love Notley because she's so progressive, yet she likes other people's money. So what's that tell you? All right. We're going to have a repeat of what happened back in 2015, 2019. More jobs are going to be lost. And the worth of the Alberta worker is going to go down. We're going to have more regulations, more quotas, more diversity quotas, you know, more visual quotas. Or we're going to start hiring people based on merit because they have what it takes. Not because they look great in that blouse. <laughs> Fuck. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And I can also go on all day in regards to uh, about diversity and ethnic quotas and who represents here, represents there. What we need is people that want the job. That's what it is. We need people that want the job. And it doesn't matter if they're black. doesn't matter if they're white. doesn't matter if they're pink, purple. doesn't matter if they identify as this, identify as that. They have the qualifications, then by all means, they should get the job based on the qualifications, not just based on the color of their skin or how they think they identify or how they pretend to identify. We need real people that want to be there for the sake of they want to do a good job. And I'm all for hiring who wants to do that. I'm all for people who want to get, get along, get ahead, reach their goals, you know, and just, just be free, just be free to do whatever they want, you know, without hitting people, taking their stuff. It, it's that simple. It is that simple again, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm just trying to queue up a here, uh, a special segment here but I can't seem to find the photograph. Anyhow, <coughs> I got lost at my cavalcade of computer, uh, <laughs> uh, computer jungle here. But I, I, you all know what I mean when it comes to priorities of work, when it comes to fairness and equality, right? It's like the title card says is that we pay and they play. And that's the dynamic that's it's always been. We pay more taxes. They play with it. Okay. And then I've dealt with people who kept saying, well, it is what it is. And, you know, there's only two things certain in life, death and taxes. And it's, they're only certain in life if you're a tax collector or if you're a mortician. That's my logic, right? Taxes are beneficial when it comes to actual building of roads, when it comes to actual education, when you're actually teaching a little kid how to read and write to think for his or herself, Okay to be critical, to ask the tough questions, and educators should take responsibility and learn how to fucking handle them. The same as our politicians, okay? Now, when I look at Rachel Notley, she has been responsible for having people uh, removed from her conferences. And regardless of how you feel about certain journalists or certain newsprints or certain, certain TV shows or whatever gossip media that you like or don't like out there, if you're in the public eye, you have to take responsibility for yourself and your party. And it doesn't matter if it comes from Joe Blow from the Tabernacle uh, News Front or if it comes from somebody from CTV News or Global News. If just because you don't like a certain reporter, you don't remove them out of your, your press conference and then turn around and say, we believe in democracy and freedom. Like, we, we, you try to be a, an open hypocrite. You honestly think people aren't going to be paying attention to those little details? Some don't because some treat politicians like they're gods, like they're gatekeepers, like they have the secret recipe to make your life utopic. Oh, no, no. We as viewers, we as consumers, we as taxpayers, as laborers, as uncles and aunts and nieces and sons and daughters, veterans, we got to stand up to these clowns and say, no, let the person ask you the question. And then you have the bloody courtesy of answering it. That simple. We should stand up and say no more to this crap. Or we just go get out 
get ourselves a pad and paper and we take notes and we ask the tough questions somehow try to get our uh, press credentials so we can ask these people what is your plan with this why do you want 11 percent tax hike what do you hope to gain from this you're going to save the environment save a few trees you know are you going to build a giant blower that's going to blow the carbon up into the atmosphere to save us all from carbon oh even though we're all made of carbon every time we exhale carbon 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 you're gonna tax us in that too all right and that doesn't matter if you're an ndp or if you're conservative if you're liberal if you're green if you're a Bloc, or if you're a rhinoceros party or if you're libertarian you propose something to the public a reporter catches it and he or she asks you a question in regards to said statement have the fucking courtesy to answer as calmly and as professionally as you can be because you're in the spotlight. But then to sit there and paint it all up as some kind of unruly protester, that doesn't give you any credential whatsoever. We've seen Justin do that. We've seen Jagmeet do that. We think Miss Christopher Freeland, let me be clear, as I lick my pits, do that. So when it comes to this Alberta election, ladies and gentlemen, vote with your conscience. Leave the heart with your family and your livelihood and your lifestyle. Who is going to represent you properly? Now, I don't usually do this in the show, but I think Miss Smith has a little more gall, a little more balls than Notley ever would. Right? That's just me, though. I don't think Notley has the balls or the gall. She's got the balls to take money from you and to scold you. And she's a firm believer in the state looking after your kids, too, to teach them the finer point, the progress which is basically borderline communism because the NDP now, as far as I'm concerned, they're not a force for the working class. You know, they want to force everyone to be working class and to pay their union dues and pay extra taxes in the name of progress. And the liberal brand, well, (laughs) I don't know what to say about that, but the liberal brand has gone to shit since the better part of 2014. And there's nothing liberal about them, too. And there are also some conservatives out there federally. Yeah, they're standing up in Parliament trying to get the truth about C-21 and C-11. But they also lack the balls, too. We need more blue-collar workers. And I mean, you know, grassroots individuals. And I'm not trying to sing the the song and praise of uh, the blue-collar hero. But the blue-collar common sense is what's going to help us. Okay, the can do attitude. And not just for Canada, but for our friends down south, our friends in Mexico, and for our friends across the oceans, east and west coast alike. Right? Why can't we make this country more liberty based? Oh, because liberty is such a dirty word. It's such an American thing. Well, no, liberty is based on human nature. Doesn't matter if you're American, Canadian, British, German, or from Timbuktu. Liberty is human-based. You want to work for something. You want to keep your family alive. You want to be a good provider. You want to look at your bank account and see more than three digits there. In some cases, and a lot of people I know personally, they're lucky to see two, especially after they pay their bills. And especially after this tax season, and don't get me going about the CRA and their bullshit, right? They want to work at home and <laughs> your pajamas and only go to the office two days out of the week because it's so tough. Toxic. Oh, said no one. I work in a toxic environment. I work with a lot of manure and a lot of cattle feed. So I'm smelling that shit all day, but it's not a toxic workplace because I work with and work for some great people. And it's nice to come home after a long day and put my feet up after, you know, hauling feed and hauling shit. But it's good to come home and look at my fridge and realize there's something to eat. And my lights are still on because I'm up my bills. But it's getting to the point where all of our paychecks are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller because we pay and they play, ladies and gentlemen. That's simple. Anyhow, if you like and hear what you see, please click like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Uh, My apologies for not displaying the uh, Polar Vortex of Bullshit Award (laughs) this week. I know I had some fans really count on it too. Uh, if you do check out Northern Perspective, uh, husband and wife team, I had them on the live stream there a couple of weeks back. Great couple, had some great chats. 
check out their videos too. They really have a good keen sense of listening to detail when it comes to the parliamentary exchange. So if you get a chance, check out their videos too, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, just carry on. Do what we can. You know, weather's getting warmer, so do some yard work. Don't forget to water your grass, water your garden. Those of us who are planting a garden, uh, take extra care of certain bugs out there. <coughs> and my heart uh, does go out to those individuals. And the wildfires, there's speculation too that there have been individuals who've been setting those fires too. So if someone tells you it's because of the climate change, tell them bullshit. Tell them it's arson. And tell them it's also the time of year too. Right? So, but like I say, ladies and gentlemen, do what you can to help each other in these trying times. You know, keep your chin up, do what we can. And uh, just try to keep being civil with each other and just trying to be good to each other to the best of our ability. Uh, like I say, if you like what you see, click like, subscribe, share this content all over your social media platforms. Look for updates on uh, YouTube and Facebook, respectively. I'm going to try to get another episode up tomorrow for you. It might be a short one, but still be another episode nonetheless. Uh, please consider donating. Links will be in the description for you to follow. Buy me a coffee app and the Patreon uh, uh, section there on my Podbean page. To my Twitter followers, don't be shy. Say hello, whatever you want to do. And if you want to reach out and touch, you can get in touch with me. Reach out and get in touch with me. <laughs> my contact information is in my description too so write a letter send me some swagger whatever you want to do uh but uh, just do what you can ladies and gentlemen and like i always say humanity merit wins the day take care and i'll see you next time bye for now hit it sweetheart because i am hard you will not like me there is no racial bigotry here here you are all equally working. This has been another episode of the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Stay sane and thank you for listening. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Well, smack my ass and call me Judy. <laughs>